Hello and welcome to episode 107 of Do More With Your Money. I am your host, TJ Van Gerven. On today's podcast episode, I'm going to talk to you about evaluating your tender offer, considerations, trade-offs, and planning opportunities. So first of all, what is a tender offer? A tender offer is a solicitation by a company or a third-party investor to purchase your equity in your company. So if you're a startup employee, for example, maybe you've been working there a few years, and the private valuation via the 409A valuation is increasing, a tender offer is a solicitation by a third-party investor to purchase your share. So maybe previously you haven't had the opportunity to you know, actually use the equity in your company that you've accumulated. And so this provides an opportunity for liquidity, although there are some trade-offs and considerations uh, when considering if you should take a uh, tender offer or not. So receiving a tender offer for a portion of the equity you've accumulated in your company can be a tempting proposition that may or may not make sense for you. And in this podcast episode, I'm going to break down the considerations, trade-offs, and planning opportunities when evaluating if moving forward with a tender offer makes sense. So again, if you're an employee or other eligible shareholder, you have the opportunity to sell This is also known as tender a portion of your vested equity in return for either cash proceeds or more favorable terms on newly issued equity. For purposes of this podcast, I'm going to focus on receiving cash proceeds for your equity. So again, why might you as the employee consider accepting a tender offer? The most common reason is for diversification purposes. So for example, let's say you are an early employee in your company and you've accumulated a substantial amount of equity, um, you may want to consider diversifying a portion of your equity to lock in the gains you've experienced. Now, this is where we're going to talk about the trade-offs as far as doing this, but you may also be considering accepting a tender offer for personal financial reasons, such as a home purchase or paying down debt. You know, while it's common for us all to be, you know, confident or even overconfident in the future of our share price within the company we own, nothing is guaranteed. Things can still not work out. And in a worst case scenario, you could see the value of your shares completely wiped away. So this is why considering a tender offer could make sense is number one, diversification purposes. Number two, personal financial reasons. You have major uh, short-term goals that you really are looking to accomplish and that equity could be used um, for those reasons. Again, if you have high interest rate debt you want to get rid of, or again, you're um, you're really looking to make a home purchase for kind of just personal lifestyle reasons, then maybe it could make sense to, again, lock in a portion of those gains. However, the closer you are to an IPO or a merger acquisition, some kind of liquidity event, the greater the chance there is for a windfall potential, meaning that what you have accumulated in equity could, you know, increase dramatically. And typically, you're going to see the most dramatic increase from going from private to public. So if you're at the point where you're receiving tender offers, um, that's usually a pretty good sign that the growth or expected growth of your company is well intact. And so for this reason, I'm often skeptical of utilizing tender offers Usually the tender offer is at a substantial discount to the current fair market valuation, which is based on that 409A valuation, um, so which puts you at a disadvantage from the jump. You have to consider who is on the other side of this trade. If a third-party investor is looking to acquire additional shares, then they must have conviction in the future growth of your company. So just make sure you're thinking about this, right? If someone is wanting to buy your shares as a private company, that usually means that they're forecasting good expected growth. And so they're looking to, I wouldn't say take advantage, but they're looking to, you know, uh, do a transaction with people who are looking for that liquidity. And so if you can, it usually makes sense to try to hold on until a potential liquidity event, again, because of the potential for a large windfall that could set you up for your path to financial independence. So how should you go about evaluating the trade-offs of divesting your shares given your your personal circumstances? In an ideal world, if you don't need the current equity in your shares and have a large appetite for risk, it usually makes sense to continue continue to hold until post-IPO when shares are publicly traded. Again, the largest share price increase usually occurs when a company goes from private to public. Now, once shares of your company are publicly traded, 
the market does a pretty good job of pricing in future growth expectations. Now, once everybody has access to actually um, purchasing shares, the market does a good job of saying, you know, what is this share really, this company, a share of this company really worth given growth expectations. So at that point, you should have confidence that the share price reflects a fair valuation. Again, when it's privately traded in 409A valuations, that is more subjective. And um, again, that and I given the fact that there's probably a discount on the tender offer, that makes me skeptical of accepting it. So that would once it's publicly traded, that would be the point at which you'd want to strongly consider diversifying your equity to lock in your path to financial independence. Now, again, when should you consider accepting a tender offer? If your equity in your company represents greater than 50% of your investable assets, and this includes retirement accounts, taxable accounts, I would say, you know, liquid investments. So just your investment assets, not including real estate or net worth, things like that. I would say if it represents 50% or more of that, then that could be an argument for uh, taking at least a portion of your tender offer to diversify a bit more, even though you have that windfall potential. You know, it does come down to kind of your capacity and tolerance to accept risk, but that would be an argument for considering taking a tender offer. Um, and then just in general, while subjective, anytime you own more than 10% of your investable assets in one company, that represents what we call a concentration risk, meaning that you own a concentrated portion of your investments in one company and that you should consider that that risk when making financial planning decisions. Other factors within your first personal financial situation, such as your liquidity or lack thereof, meaning you know how much you know readily available um, assets that you can convert to cash. How much do you have? If you have very little liquidity, then this could argue for accepting a part of your tender offer. Again, if you have high interest rate debt, let's say you're carrying credit card debt that you haven't had the ability to pay off, this could be an argument for using a portion of your tender offer. If you have short-term goals that are on the horizon, such as a house purchase or education expense, um, that could impact your need to sell a portion of your equity. It's important to review the opportunity cost of these various decisions, meaning if you are to use this money from this equity to purchase a home or pay down debt, the opportunity cost is the potential increase in the share price versus the guaranteed kind of return when you do things like pay down your debt. Because for example, if you have high interest rate debt, let's say greater than 10% interest, if you pay down that debt, that is a quote unquote guaranteed rate of return because you're not you're not paying interest at that rate. So that is the opportunity cost of, of using capital from your equity to do that kind of thing. Now, in general, if you don't have an immediate need or a clear purpose for the use of the tender offer proceeds, it usually makes sense to decline the offer, in my opinion. Um, while there are always downside risks with keeping equity in any company, if you've made it to the point when you're receiving tender offers, chances are your company's growth potential is well intact. If you have the capacity to keep holding on to your equity, meaning from a financial planning standpoint, if you have the capacity to you know, not really impact your long-term financial plan by losing out on this equity, it usually makes sense to not sell given the windfall potential. Again, given the, the potential that this could turn into a large sum of money that could accelerate your path to financial independence. If you are anticipating a liquidity event, make sure to review your tax planning opportunities, especially with incentive stock options known as ISOs. Uh, by exercising earlier, you can lock in lower valuations based on that 409A valuation, which can help avoid potential AMT liabilities, alternative minimum tax, um, and gets the clock ticking on long-term capital gain treatment. Um, there's a lot of jargon in there. I've had prior podcast episodes on um, optimizing incentive stock options. You can go back and listen to them. But the point is here is that you do want to consider exercising sooner rather than later, uh, depending on the valuation, depending on if you're anticipating an IPO, because again, it can really um, save a lot of money in taxes. There are downside risks and you definitely want to be mindful of the AMT potential. Um, again, I would, I would suggest you go listen to prior podcast episodes. I've spoken about that previously. Um, but as always, you know, this podcast should not be relied upon for personalized investment or tax advice. And it is strongly recommended that you consult a tax and or financial professional, again, especially if you are looking at those ISO situations for exercising earlier uh, at a certain valuation and um, getting the clock ticking on long term capital gain treatment. But yeah, in general, the main takeaway from this is that I would be skeptical of accepting any tender offer 
because again, there is somebody on the other side of that trade who is anticipating more growth. So unless you really have a great use of the money or a really high concentration risk and you just, you know, you can't stand the idea of losing out on the gains you've already experienced, um, then usually it makes sense to decline that tender offer in my experience. So that is all I have for you today. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Lastly, I want to remind you to do you. Because in a world of increased commoditization, nobody can replicate you. This podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions. None of the information provided in this podcast is intended as investment, tax, accounting, or legal advice.